in an election year guaranteed to divide us. This is a debacle. Finally, a second term we can all agree on. Yes! Comedy Central's The Daily Show. Mondays with Jon Stewart. Tonight at 11, 10 Central on Comedy Central. And next day on Paramount+. Plus. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. Why wait to see if you'll get something you like this Valentine's Day when you can go to BlueNile.com and find something you'll love? Whether you're looking to treat yourself to a little winter sparkle or show a galantine how much you appreciate them, Blue Nile offers a wide selection of high-quality designs, expert guidance, and free 30-day returns for the ultimate peace of mind. You can even design your own jewelry. Right now, save up to 50% at BlueNile.com. That's BlueNile.com. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Hi there, Duke fans. PBR Bites, episode number 34. Time for us to preview the game that we've got coming up against Wake Forest. Uh, This is, I I don't know how to say it, folks. This is a really, really big game for the Blue Devils because Wake Forest, newsflash, they are are an excellent, excellent team. Been playing great ball lately. And we got a, you know, this is a huge contest for Duke playing Wake Forest at home. Uh, I am Jason Evans, by the way. Joining me is Donald Wine. I'm in Durham. Donald, where are you today? I'm in Louisville, Kentucky I, with my friends. We were kind of celebrating the weekend here. Uh, and, and Jason uh, will be transparent. It is just a few minutes after we recorded episode number 594. Yes. Uh, where we recap the BC game. This is still Super Bowl Sunday. We do not know who is winning this game yet. But unfortunately, it's not going to be my Detroit Lions next year, though. We're back. Wait till next year. It is a favorite refrain. Yes. But your <laughs> Lions, they probably feel better about waiting until next year than they usually would. Yeah, look. So Duke's coming off. A couple games, honestly, against teams at the bottom of the ACC standings that the Blue Devils won fairly comfortably in Notre Dame and Boston College. Wake Forest is a is a major, major step up in quality for for the Blue Devils. This is a Wake team that a few weeks ago was like in the 40s or 50s in Ken Palm. Um, as I wake up this morning, they're number 28. They have rocketed up the rankings. This is a team that absolutely has its eye on getting a double buy in the ACC. Heck, they probably have their eye on on really trying to contend perhaps for even an ACC title. It would not be crazy if that happened. They are eight and four in the conference. Donald, tell me a little bit about how they've been playing lately, who they've beaten, who they've lost to, and how impressive this Wake Forest team has been. Yeah, you you mentioned they were eight and four in the ACC. They are in fourth place. They are one game behind Duke. So Jason, you mentioned how big this game is. It is a very, very big game on Monday night. They are 16 and seven overall. The big wins that they have this year, among top 100 Ken Palm teams, Florida, Rutgers, Virginia Tech, Boston College, Miami, Virginia, Syracuse, and NC State. So uh, the thing about them, though, is they've been surging lately. Three wins in a row over Syracuse, Georgia Tech, and NC State. They played yesterday against NC State at home. So they're also doing the Saturday-Monday double, so it's not like they've had a bye or anything like that over the weekend. They will be just as tired as we are entering this game. But, Jason, I think even when you look at their losses, their losses are all top 100 Kempom teams. Georgia, Utah, LSU, FSU, NC State, UNC, and Pitt. So there are no bad losses here for for Virginia or for Wake Forest. But the thing about Wake Forest is, and I know you're going to get into these in the metrics, they are sound in every facet of basketball. Offense, defense, special teams, you want to call the intangibles. They are, they've been a really solid team this year, and it shows in the metrics. Yeah, Donald, let's get to the advanced metrics like you mentioned, or like I mentioned there. They are a top 30 team in Ken Pomeroy. They play kind of slow on offense. 
This is a very interesting thing about their pace. They're 218th in offensive pace of play, but they're really fast on defense. 25th, top 25 in terms of how fast opponents take shots. It's almost like Wake Forest tricks you into thinking you've got a good shot and then you miss it and they start racing the other direction. It's a very interesting dynamic that they have. Um, let's get to their offense. This Wake Forest team is in a truly outstanding, excellent shooting team. They are 17th in the country at three-point field goal percentage, hitting like 38% of their threes. That's a big number. They hit almost 54% of their two-point shots as well. So, And that's a big number. And then, Donald, when they get to the free throw line, they knock it down. Wake Forest is hitting, this is an outrageous number, 80.2% of their free throws. There's, they're second in the country at free throw percentage. Villanova, which hits a little over 81%, is the only team in the country better than Wake Forest at shooting free throws. Do not put Wake Forest in the free throw line. They will bury you. Now, in terms of what they don't do great on offense, you can block their shots. Like, they they put up shots that they're confident in, and sometimes it gets swatted away. They're, they're like, not even in the top half of the country at block percentage. And they're also, they turn the ball over a little bit. Not a ton, but, like, compared to the rest of their offense, turnovers are something they have a little bit of trouble with. But really, the truth is, if Wake gets an open shot, you're in trouble because they're going to bury it. Let's get to their defense really quick. They don't do a great job of turning teams over on defense. They're almost like in the bottom, you know, 100 in the land in turnover percentage. They do a good job of defending the three-point line, though. That's something they do excellent on, on defense. They only allow 32% of uh, opponent three-pointers to go in, like top 30 in the country at three-point field goal um, defending uh, is Wake Forest. And there's one crazy stat they have. And, Donald, I think this is absolutely fascinating. And this is something you and I – have talked about about Duke a lot lately. We've talked about Duke's assist percentage. Do we want Duke to be up 50, 60 plus percent uh, of Duke's baskets off of assists? Wake Forest only allows assists on 40% of baskets, seventh lowest in the country. It's something Duke has struggled with at times. Look, we did great against BC, but like uh, against UNC, we really struggled with it. We we frankly didn't do a good job with it against Notre Dame. Wake, Wake is really good at making you create your own shot, not allowing you to create shots and opportunities for your teammates. That's one of the best things they do on defense. And then the last thing I wanted to mention in the in the metrics, because this is a metric, Ben's minutes. Only 22, 23% of Wake's minutes go to their bench. They basically have five guys that they are playing almost the entire game. They're, you know, occasionally they'll sub for Efron Reed, the big man, because, you know, a center that size, he's going to get a little bit tired. But for the most part, they are not playing their bench very much at all. The national average, Duke, most teams play more than 30% of their minutes going to bench guys. Again, at Wake, it's less than 23%. And that's just an interesting thing about this team. If you get Wake in foul trouble, they don't have guys on the bench who can come in and really help them out. So that's an interesting potential angle of attack with the Duke Blue Devils. And that last stat lends me to the one that I thought was interesting. Steve Forbes, head coach of Wake Forest, Trust his guys, right? You mentioned they really go with five guys. If a guy gets two fouls in the first half, they stay in the game. 41% of their minutes come from guys with two foul participation. So the fact is, it's not where foul trouble is going to scare him into subbing anybody out of this game. Maybe three fouls will, but two fouls, these guys, are, you have to expect those guys to stay in the game and continue to play because he trusts that they are able to keep themselves in the ball game uh, from a foul perspective. So I thought that was very interesting. Usually you're talking about Teams maybe are like 20 to 25%. You have some teams that are much lower than that. But to have 40% of your minutes come from guys with two fouls means they do draw fouls, or they, at least uh, they, they foul quite frequently. But also these guys know how to stay in the game and continue to play defense and play offense under control with two fouls. So I thought that was a very interesting thing. And Jason, as you kind of overlaid everything, right? If you're thinking about inside the conference, since conference play has begun, Wake Forest, the number two offense, Duke, the number one offense. Wake Forest, the number three defense, Duke, the number five defense in the conference. So this is a match where everyone should be really yeah. tuning in because this is a very, very big game, not just for standings, but just the implications of who we're playing. Wake Forest is a team that is surging. Is, you know, if you're looking at bracketology, a lot of people aren't giving them any respect. But as we move forward, Wake Forest is a team that 
has the metrics to show that they are one of these top teams that can contend for an ACC title. They can be in the NCAA tournament and they can make, and they can cause some damage while they're there. It, they're very, very sound. And I think that's the key here, Jason. They're a very sound defense and they have a couple of guys that can do it all. And we're going to talk about that, but I, I just want to say that, you know, Wake Forest is a team we really should be paying attention to. And tomorrow everyone should be focused on the fact that this is going to be a barn burner of a game. This this will probably not be a game where we have lots of runs and stretches. This is going to be a, a very grinded out game. Toughness, physicality, heart, effort, focus, all of that is going to be key. Yeah, uh, we're going to take a break in a second, and I want to talk about some of the Wake Forest players that we should focus on. But the last thing I wanted to mention before we take that break is one serious advantage for Duke in this game is that we're playing Wake at home in Cameron, not on the road. And Wake is especially a team that has struggled on the road. All their ACC losses come in road games. The, frankly, the only road games, the only teams they've beaten away from Wake Forest is they beat Boston College and Georgia Tech, two teams that are near the bottom of the standings. And, you know, look, it's, it's not, I'm not, I'm not breaking any news to tell folks <laughs> that playing at home is better than playing on the road, but this Wake team especially has struggled somewhat on the road and looks like they are way more comfortable at home than they are away from Joel Coliseum. So that's something that gives Duke, you know, I think some extra hope in this game. And Jason is going to make them extra uncomfortable as my, on the Monday night because he's going to be at the game. So I, I will be right I have full there faith in the and credit row. in Jason Evans. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. We're going to take a quick break on the other side. Some of the names, some of the players, some of the guys you need to focus on when Wake Forest comes to Cameron tonight. Hey, Duke fans, Jason and Donald here with a uh, commercial message for you. You know, as the calendar keeps turning, the intensity of the games continues to build. And in February, we here at the DBR podcast are really proud to be teaming up with my bookie for some extra fun in the buildup to the big brackets coming in March. That's right, Jason. And as we watch the push towards a regular season crown, my bookie is offering a special promotion to listeners of this show. Head to mybookie.ag, and when you sign up, you get a 50% sign-up bonus by using our promo code, DUKEMBB. Even easier, Jason, you can use the link in the notes of this show, and it will take you directly there. Heading into the week, Duke was 27-1 to win the national title. Big games this week against Florida State and Miami. Game props is all available at mybookie. Dude, 27-1, I might take some of those odds. I like that. Give me that, buddy. Yeah, again, we have teamed up here with the folks at MyBookie for a special promotion leading up to the craziness of March. Use the link in our show notes. Receive a 50% sign-up bonus up to $1,000. Wow. I don't I don't know about you, Val. I'm not wagering $1,000 all that much. I'm not. <laughs> By the way, you also get a $10 casino chip with that. So more fun for the build-up to Phoenix in the Final Four. Bet any t- anything, anytime, anywhere with MyBookie. And thanks to MyBookie for partnering with the DBR podcast. Don't forget to use that promo code Duke MBB. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. Donald, we're back from the break, and I want to talk about a couple of the guys on this Wake Forest team. And I want to mention, I want to start with someone. This may be a little surprising. This is not the guy who has the big stats. This is not even the the starter who plays the most minutes or anything like that. But I think Efron Reed, their big man. Efron Reed made them into a new team. Uh, he's a seven foot 200, again, seven foot 240 pounds. He is a hoss. And he gives them real size and rim protection, elite, elite rebounding. He didn't play in their first seven games. And they were just four and three. And then he became eligible. They ripped off seven wins in a row. And this month, they've beaten Syracuse by 29, beaten Georgia Tech by 29, Look, they nearly gacked that game up to NC State this weekend. Um, but having Efron Reed has made this team into a significantly better ball club. And I, I think their front line, to me, is a real challenge. And it's because 
Efron Reed is so big. And right next to him, you've got Carr. you got Andrew Carr, who is 6'10", 220, and a really versatile player. Like, Andrew Carr is very similar, I think, to Kyle Filipowski. He's a guy who can play you on the post, but he can also go outside and really hit three-pointers and, and bury shots in your face. He, he, he also, you know, he's a guy who can pass the ball well, um, doesn't turn it over a lot, very versatile as a power forward. It, it is a tough matchup. If you are playing a seven footer like Efron Reed and then a versatile big man next to him like Andrew Carr. And and for Duke, I think that is going to be a real, you know, a real challenge. Um, because I, I Flip is gonna have to guard Efron Reed. I don't think I don't think you're gonna get, you know, Mitchell and Sean Stewart. They don't have the size because Efron Reed is so big. And Andrew Carr is one of it's one of the few times this year Mark Mitchell's gonna be playing a guy who is physically that much bigger than him. That's going to be the interesting one. I know against Boston College, we saw Mark Mitchell lined up a lot against Quentin Post, who's also seven foot and, and can be a behemoth in his own right. But it's going to be interesting when you have two of those guys on the floor and you have to kind of pick and choose between them with one. You know, Kyle Filipowski is going to have to step to the plate and play some defense uh, against one of these big men. But also you're talking about maybe there's going to be some sets where you have Flip and Ryan Young in the game at the same time. Flip and Sean Stewart in the game at the same time. Ryan Young and, and Sean Stewart in the game at the same time. Mark Mitchell kind of rovering around around these guys. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see what the defensive assignments are going to be and how they switch during the game, because I do think there's going to be opportunities for Duke to say, hey, look, let's minimize Efren Reed's uh, production here and focus on some of the guys on the outside, like Hunter Salas, who, of course, is, is just lighted up from three and wow, is yeah. able to, you know, is able to put fill, fill the bucket up very, very quickly. Yeah, look, every year it feels like Wake Forest has uh, a guy that they get through the transfer portal who becomes like a first team all ACC kind of player. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to meet Hunter Salas. <laughs> <laughs> who they brought over from Gonzaga. This guy was like a top 10, top top 20 recruit coming out of high school. I mean, you would have thought that possibly Hunter Salas was a one and done kind of talent. And he really, I mean, really struggled from the field, from shooting, especially beyond the arc. When he was at Gonzaga, he had barely 25% of his threes, his two seasons in Gonzaga. O- only averaged like four points per game last year for the Zags. Transfers over to Wake Forest. Boom. Suddenly, he's hitting 40% of his three-pointers. He's hitting 43% from three in ACC play. Averages like 18 points per game. Hunter Salas has been an absolute revelation for this Wake Forest team. He's able to do things, create things, that no one else on that Wake team is able to do. And look, they've got four different guys who average better than 14 points per game. Four different guys who, frankly, can bury you with a 20-plus point game anytime. That's one of the things that makes this wake that makes this wake team so difficult to guard. I mean, we already I talked a lot about those big men on the interior, Andrew Carr and and Efron Reed, but Hunter Salas, Kevin Miller, Cameron Hildreth, Cameron Hildreth, he, he's like in his nineteenth season there, or something like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's only a junior. How is that possible? But those three guys on the perimeter, they all can hit three pointers. Very confident with that shot. Um, this wake team, man, uh, it, it, it's a tough matchup. They have balanced scoring, as you mentioned. It can come from anywhere. There's a lot of guys who can do things inside, outside. And really the outlier, funny enough, on offense is Efron Reed. He's the one that the only one of the starters that are under 10 points per game, but he also averages close to eight and a half rebounds per game. So they this is a team that's very good at rebounding. Jason, you mentioned the fact that they're physical inside. They are they they are best of the conference at defensive rebounding. Duke is third. That rebounding battle is going to be key here on the inside. And then on the outside, as we've talked about this year, everyone who comes to Cameron, for the most part, has seemed to shoot well from beyond the arc. If our perimeter defense can win that battle and keep their three-pointers down to a minimum, we're going to have a really good chance to win this ballgame. But I think it starts inside with the physicality, with the rebounding, and, and being able to make it where Wake Forest only gets one chance to make a basket. And if they don't, We should be getting the ball and going the other way. They're going to be doing the same to us. So this is going to be a game probably with a lot of possessions. And if we're efficient on offense and defense, I think we have a really good chance at at winning this ball game by, you know, five or six points. Yeah. So uh, looking at some advanced metric stuff, Bart Torvik allows you to sort based on date in the month of February. February is only 11 days old, Donald. Wake has only played three games. In the month of February, Bart Torvik says Wake Forest has been the fifth best team in all of college basketball. Number five. That's that's impressive. That's good. That's good. Uh, yeah. 
We should make not, them number three hundred and fifty fifth uh, tomorrow night. That'd be great. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And then, like you said, uh, Ken Pomeroy projects Duke wins. That you said five points. Ken says six points. Seventy nine to seventy three. He says is the final score. I actually think this is going to be a game where one of these teams is going to get to eighty points. Um, uh, Wake is just you know too good an offensive team. I think Duke is due for a good good shooting game. We we haven't had one in a while. And it's going to be – it's a super important contest. Whichever team, in my opinion, whichever team of Duke or Wake wins this contest has a real significant leg up on, A, getting the double bye, but, B, perhaps even being the number two team in the conference because I think Virginia's schedule is going to catch up to them and Virginia isn't going to quite stay as high as they've been in the standings. Um, it's a super important game coming up tonight in Cameron with me on the sidelines. There is a lot of importance in this game. I'm really excited about this one. Um, Wake Forest and Duke always have some good battles, especially in Cameron. And this is no exception. Everyone who is not named Jason Evans is going to Cameron tonight. Bring it because I know Jason will. I don't have to I don't have to lecture him, but everyone else bring it because the noise level needs to be fine. You know, the big four shirt. Jason, you need to wear the big four shirt again. Do it. Yeah, baby. It's not crazy if it works. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that big four shirt, by the way, celebrates a victory over Wake Forest. So, perfect. It's perfect time. <laughs> there you go. I love it. It is perfect timing. All right. For Donald, I'm Jason. Thanks for joining us on this DBR Bites Wake Forest preview edition. We will see you in Cameron this evening. Here's the Duke band to play us out and take us home. <laughs>